There are four different types of backend workflows that you can create in a bubble app. Here's how they work and when you would want to use each of them. The first is the API workflow. This is the most common type of backend workflow. API workflows can be triggered from inside of your application, so a user can click on a button to trigger it. They can also be triggered from external systems. So let's start with the internal example. Let's say that you have a user that needs to schedule an email to go out at a future point in time. The API workflow is excellent for this. So they'll click on a button and you'll run an action to schedule that API workflow to run at some future date and time. Now you don't always have to schedule it for the future. You can also run it immediately. The API workflow also lets you run multiple times on a dynamic number of items. So again, let's say that a user wants to send an email out, but now not to just one recipient, but to some unknown number of recipients. Uh, you can schedule that API workflow on the list of recipients. This can be fully dynamic. So whether it's 10 people, 100 people, the logic that you create will tell Bubble to run this multiple times. As for the external example, a really common use case for having external systems trigger your API workflows is with webhooks. Webhooks are a way to have app-to-app -app notifications in real time. We often see this with payment gateways. So if you have an integration with Stripe, for example, and you need to be notified whenever there's a new subscription or if a payment failed, you can have Stripe trigger one of your API workflows so that you can be notified and take action from there. Maybe you send the customer an email, you update your database. So API workflows can be triggered internally and also externally. API workflows are also fantastic for creating looping workflows. They can actually schedule themselves to run again. Very powerful functionality here to create a recursive type of system where things run on a loop and you have all the control over the timing around that. How often it should run, You know what the frequency is between each iteration of the loop, whether it should continue indefinitely, or if there should be a, a termination date for that. The next type of backend workflow is the database trigger. Now, this is something that actually is triggered indirectly. Unlike the API workflow, a user can't click on a button to trigger a database trigger. As the name describes, this triggers when Bubble detects a change to the database. So you define which data type you want to wait for a change on. And whenever a new record is created, when a field has been modified, when it's been deleted, this database trigger will run. Now, you can Add conditions to this so that it only runs when a certain type of change has occurred or if uh, a record was created and, and that's all you're looking for, right? You have control over uh, that logic. Now, the special thing about this type of uh, event is that you actually have access to the state of the data record before the change as well as after the change. This is really helpful to compare uh, the difference between both states uh, so that you can move on with your logic. That way you can say things like, if this field before is different from this field after, move forward with the workflow. Otherwise, maybe it doesn't pass the condition and it stops right there. A lot of things that you can do from there. This also helps you consolidate your workflows. You don't have to worry about uh, triggering these actions if there are many different points where these records can be modified throughout your application. This can be one consolidated area in your backend workflows that handles it for you. You just want to make sure that you have the right conditions in place so that it really only runs when you need it to. The third type of backend workflow is the custom event. Now, custom events also exist in pages, so you can have those in your page workflows as well. It works the exact same. Custom events are workflow events that have to be triggered by another workflow. So again, you can't directly trigger it with one button click. It actually has to be triggered from within another workflow. And you have the option to trigger it immediately or to schedule it after a certain uh, number of seconds in delay. Other than that, it works just like any other regular workflow. This is great for creating an intentional sequence of actions so that things run in a certain order. Uh, but keep in mind that custom events cannot be triggered directly externally from outside systems, um, and they cannot run on a loop. So you want to use API workflows for those things. Custom events are really for more kind of branching off into a sequence of steps, making sure that they run in a certain order. But just like API workflows, you can set up multiple parameters to send data to the event that can then be referenced in the actions. Now, the last type of backend workflow is the recurring event. This is great if you have simple recurring workflows that you want to run 
on a, a straightforward frequency. So the preset options that are available to you are daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually. If you needed more granularity there with the timing, you'd have to get crafty with the logic and you can only define one type of thing at a time. So this is really for very straightforward recurring workflows. Honestly, I don't use this. I would much rather use the API workflow and have full control over all of the properties and uh, configurations for that looping system. Everything that the recurring event can do, you can do in the API workflow and more. You can pass multiple values to it. You can get much more detailed with the timing between every run. Uh, so my suggestion is go with the API workflow. You'll have more control with it, uh, but the recurring event is there if you need.